Yes, yes, we do anything. No, no. I, I got a problem with those dudes from St. Kitt. Uh, 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 in other Croix. words, St. Yeah, Croix. Yes. Okay. I mean, here's a little island, twin island nation where the adult male population can fit in the upper deck of Yankee Stadium or Shea Stadium, and here we got a conflict. That, that's not bombed. something that we should look at. And, <laughs> and be droned, I should say. Bombing is out, droning is in. Let me ask you, let me go back to, I, I want you to say so that all the time again. What oh, we have inherited as a transitional stage to a larger global family, and we're moving in the right direction. But we got to keep on moving it in the right direction. We need the, the islands need to have their peculiarity respected and get into the African humanization. But we ain't gonna stop there. All those islands should be, should be meeting and they should be figuring, how can we just declare one island nation? The, if the Dominican Republic doesn't want to be in it, then everybody in, else in, is one in island fact, nation. That was the thing with what was called federation. That was yes. normal, manly. Uh, 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 but for uh, economic uh, interest uh, and personal uh, interest, uh, we uh, have uh, not federation. made those. Uh, uh, so we need to see the mistakes that we made in terms of uh, economics, uh, politics, and culture. But economics is forcing us to be global. Everybody else is global. The yeah. Chinese model needs to be studied, not just Mao Zedong and, and, and Maoism. We need to study the last hundred years of, of China to see how that humanity has come together with the greatest force in human history, ready to shit on everybody and understand it. We've got to counterbalance that. that they got two billion people. They have more than that because for years they could only have one child, so they hit the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, we don't know how many Chinese there are. They now need a second continent. They're not going to go up north to the Mongols. More They're not going to move on to, into the, over the Euros into and Russia. Minerals. They're going to go to water. the African continent. The weakest. And they, that's right. The, ri the richest continent in the world is there for their taking, and they have plans. Just as the brothers said they built the, they didn't put in the billion dollars to build that center in Ethiopia, which is magnificent. I opposed it, but it's one of the loveliest uh, administrative centers I've ever seen. And I said, I justify it by saying they can't, the Chinese can't take it out. But they're going to put in the money to rule it. They're going to put in the money to maintain it. They're going to provide the stamp. What was that? It's bug. Oh, no, it's more than bug. They, 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 they have it set up where they know who to bribe, who wants men instead of women, who wants this and that. Back, In other words, back they to have the blockchain. Back to the blockchain. You said, so, it's just, uh, stay with this term for just a second, just, just for the yes. kids. Yes, economics uh, the first principle of the universe and if the blockchain can be a part of it, significant in the future, then we need to look at that. Okay. I need to learn more about it. And the other thing we're talking about is you, you said uh, develop, um, What's development that? versus um, um, survival, survival culture. culture. We're globally we're Deve in whoa, whoa, whoa. Developmental. Developmental culture means you put together your economics, your politics, and your culture to serve you. Now we are participating in other people's developmental culture. We're, we're a, a great addition to the European developmental culture. And so we need to move from a transform from survival culture, so we survive. It's at the clan level, right? it's survival, right? it's at the clan level. Survival is on the clan level. Yes. Survival is on the many state level. Yeah, like Michael Steele. Like the Gambit. Why it's, should. It's, it's, it's before Federation, in other words, you're saying. Where's, uh, Federation I like is just a transition to a larger entity. Right. The Africa mm -hmm. should not no, just be. No, a, a no I'm, just, I'm just trying to do a line here. No, so no, we're, we're saying, saying was, clan saying federation. In, I was, I was, no, I was standing in. No, when Dr. J. I was standing in the 1960s in the Caribbean. Dr. J. was saying, I said, I said, I said it was attempted in the Caribbean to have a federation. But that's but that's after clan. Well, I'm trying I'm trying to get a line well, here. Well, well, in the sense, I mean, I don't know because in, in Jamaica and so we you know, they say it's a first clan, you know, you know, it, 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 okay. these are well, survivors you can of the say clan okay. in the sense that out of Africa, with the Middle Passage, came African clans, a clan in Jamaica, a clan in Trinidad and okay. Tobago, a clan in Barbados, a clan in Haiti, a clan in South Carolina, a clan in in New York. Yeah. So, yes. We come up with an improvised clan system, but it's a survival right. unit. Okay, now we're now now we then, 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 to transform it into a developmental unit. Yes, I understand. But now, but but, but federation was in there. Federation. And now, now we leave a federation the, too. The federation was an attempt at the Caribbean. That's what it was. To okay. say, okay, we can't we can't do this mini cool. min, 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 min thing. So the federation result. failed. They never had a chance they to never had a chance to call. Okay, okay, thank you. Next. And one after federation is 
Developmental culture. I mean, developmental. This is a pan African. The Q&A. next one is we're in survival culture. We're in survival right now. We need to control as much of our economics as we can, make our politics work with our economics, and have a culture that speaks to these larger issues. So that's why Pan-Africanism is absolutely necessary. It's a question of Pan-Africanism parish. You have a Pan-Chinese, you have a Pan-Indian, you have a Pan-Arab, you have a Pan-White folks, you have a Pan-Latino, but even the beautiful thing about the Pan-Latino is that they have said our real power is not unifying as Latinos in South America and Central America, but we need to link with the mother continent, Africa. And so, with that consciousness in Brazil, that they're going to take the, the 30 uh, different races in Brazil and weld them into one Brazilian race that is largely African and deliver it to Africa. Why? Because ecologically, we're at the same level in the, on the globe. We produce the same crops. We have the same uh, 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 layout, etc. cetera. And, and we're close to each other. So the Brazilians have decided that even as white as they are, we're going to be African. Well, and that's a leap. Because plus, when I went there, Plus the real is uh, tanking <laughs> the huh? other system. No, it's, 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 it's not just on an incident like that. When we, t- when we take up those little incidences, we get what I call a paralysis of analysis. You focus on the incident, you can speak to it. But the larger picture is that there's a hundred million black people in Brazil with a deep cultural tradition that had little respect for Africa. Now there's been an explosion of respect for Africa. And so that's that's a transformative thing. We're actually seeing the transformation actually taking place. The next conference of the mayors, the last one was in Accra two months ago. Two years is gonna be in Salvador Bahia with a black woman who's the vice mayor taking the lead. That's a leap from when I went to Brazil in the 80s, 1980s, and the 90s, and uh, 2003 was the last time I was in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So this leap has actually taken place, but it's not in in a volume. The Europeans are doing their thing and causing confusion. The Arabs are doing their thing and causing domination, destruction, and death. And, always, and so, okay. and then the Asians have no respect for us. Yeah. The Chinese don't want to, uh, they're, they're sending their men in to marry African women right. to get control of the land and to deal with the clan structures. Okay, okay uh, uh, we gotta go. I, I understand. Uh, just, we're, just real quick, we're, 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 okay, we're through the, the development of culture, and now we're, you're saying the next thing, Pan Africanism is, is Pan Africanism is in there. The development, so, so, the development model. Development model. Model. Right. model. Okay. So then, what's the next? And then the, 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 the final phase would be this coming the together. Global African global. family, which is a mixture of those nations that got us to a certain point, those clans that were at another historical period, the races that are in the modern period. We're moving for a global African family with a mix that you see in this room here. In this context, that's where we're going. I mean, that he could take all of this set. This is like Dr. Clark's widow, Sybil. Uh, She's got a similar setup in size and space and, and the same feel. Okay, so tell the brother I'm very proud to even touch the hem of his garment in terms of this. Just the mix of all this. He sat with Dr. Clark for long enough, that's for that's sure. That's right. And uh, so that, uh, and for us to have this type of discussion is beautiful because we've been discussing bullshit. How can we deal with one thorn in the ass, nigga? In the old days when we had our societies of secrecy, they would have gotten together and said, he goes. Period. And if he does not reform he himself, he goes. He That's yeah. our tradition. Yeah, and we yeah. had these societies to, to make yeah. sure that we didn't spend all. Here okay, we well, are. But, but, so okay. you're a blessing to have asked us to come. It worked out, so I needed a ride, so I begged my sister to stay. And then, uh, uh, no, 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 because I, I, I'm sorry. Let me just say quickly, because Dr. J alluded to Julius Nairi, and I saw something on BBC, I hope it's BBC or Euro News. They were saying, you know, the white man was African, they were saying, do you notice, why is it that um, next door to, to Kenya, you have all this quote-unquote tribal, you know, thing? Not the, la- not, not the last election, the previous one, when they had that, Slaughter, right? Yeah, yeah. And they said it and died them for war crime, they should take them to Europe for, 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 for trial. They said, Why is that in, in, in Kenya you have this thing? And in Nigeria, and, and not to mention R- Rwanda and, and Burundi, why is that um, Tanzania is relatively stable? 
and they played an excerpt from, 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 from Julius Iron yeah. and And he, was, he said, look, look, I'm the president. I'm not the president of a clan. I'm not the president of a tribe. That's yeah. when he was taking over. Well, that's, I'm the president of Tanzania. He said, I find it stupid. Yeah, I find it stupid. That's, 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 you, would that's, ba you would base your administration. A guy, a guy knows nothing about um, mechanics. Yeah. Or, 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 or mason. And you just put the guy because guys from your clan. Right. That, that's not development culture. That's true. That's what you were saying. So that's, yeah. why, that's why it's relatively stable because they dealt with the universalism, pan Africanism, yeah. nation yeah. at yeah. that level. Nation, yeah. the, the nation uh, building. Let me just so you can go. Let me see, let me thank you for just so he has uh, uh, to follow that example okay. in the mountains of Tanzania. The iconic Jackie Robinson who transformed the youth of whole so many people, including myself, as a 10-year-old watching Jackie come into baseball. His son, David, is in the mountains of Tanzania, married to a Tanzanian, with almost a dozen children, working his coffee plantation. He helped to create a cooperative of Tanzanian in the mountains, and he's marketing his co-op coffee on the international market. He's tracing his ancestry back. He's given me an outline of the tracing. This is Jackie Robinson's son, and and it's a blessing to have known him and to be. And some of our people have even visited him in the plantation and said, "Look, brother, you're gonna have to get some electricity, some running water, and stuff. You you're living at the level of survival culture, but you need to put some amenities in." Marcus Garvey's two sons, Marcus Jr. and Julius Garvey, the medical doctor, are personal friends of ours. And they have been in the struggle to define what their father's legacy was. And so they're not going to just think in terms of a clan relationship out of Jamaica. They come out of a situation in which you're dealing with the they global. It's French, French, French. You're dealing with the global African community. So Julius is now fully functional. Marcus Jr. is was a brilliant mathematician. He taught at City College. He dealt with physics, etc. But he, he's suffering from the old folks illness. So but he, he has a beautiful Jamaican wife, Jean, taking care of him in Florida. And uh, so I'm saying, we need to pull these stories together. There would be such a teaching lesson to have an iconic brother who broke into baseball and to have his son now married to uh, a woman in the mountains of Tanzania dealing on the international market with coffee, you see? And, and so he's got to deal with clan because she has a clan, but he's been able to function because he represents the African-American clan. Mm -hmm. And they've given us a certain amount of integrity. I saw that happen when we took Mrs. King to Zimbabwe in, in 83. She represented the struggle of Martin Luther King for our restoration of our humanity, and they treated her like a head of state. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she didn't get the treatment because she was King's widow. She got the treatment because King represented our clan struggling for its Africanness in, in America. And so these are the type of things that uh, we can pull together and help the brother uh, as he gives us a whole other dynamic that I never thought about. Uh, what is he calling it? Active. What are you calling it, brother? Audio Active? stream. Oh, audio, audio drama. Audio, audio drama. drama. I like that. That's in the best of the African tradition. So that um, it was an audio drama when Nelson died. Part of it was a joke when uh, Obama decided to be his little flirty self and fool around with that Swedish uh, woman and do a little selfie. But his wife looked over at him and said, brother, you've got to come home one day so you can do your little selfie with that. And the world played that whole thing up too. Mm. But the drama was Nelson Mandela leaving and there was his two wives, mm -hmm. the latest widow and the one who held up the struggle for Nelson. Nelson was in jail. In jail, you can't do anything but break rocks. Winnie was the spirit of the struggle and the revolution. But because marriage is such a personal thing, after 
he, he got out, they couldn't maintain the relationship. But we need to see that as a, a true African relationship. Undying love and mission. Not sexual love, but undying love for the people and the struggle. So when he, fortunately, those two women worked it out. It wasn't one saying, oh, that, that bitch, I don't have nothing to do with her. Oh, this one, I don't have. They, well, they, well, no, but, well, Gracia is, 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 is it. It's a special when, spirit. When, yeah, you know, when you have so more Winnie. Michelle and then you. you, you right, you, you, but you, Winnie is that. a special spirit. Because Nelson did not bring the struggle to us. He was a Marxist, Africanist, at the time of the Freedom Charter. He was hooked up with the communists. In fact, Joe Slovo, the head of of the, uh, a member of the Communist Party was the head of the spear of the nation, the military wing. Uh, so they were in another bag. Yeah. But when he kept the African uh, uh, focus and the women struggling for the children and the story of the women in South Africa and what they did to give the South African struggle its real dimension has not been told. You see? I was with the World Council of Churches in 1983. I went there to translate the Ups book, but instead I opened my mouth because I, I, I wasn't brilliant enough to translate the Ups book. And I said that the churches are not doing enough for the struggle in South Africa. So Philip, Dr. Philip Potter was from Dominica, was a childhood friend of Professor Scobie, who was my partner at City College. Philip Potter of the World Council of Churches said, Dr. Jeffrey, we're going to put you in charge of the task force to deliver the churches increased the church's deliverance of help in South Africa. So I did a book on the crisis in South Africa. That's when I learned about that. I learned about the black spots. I learned about the total war against African peoples. I learned about the broader bond. I learned about the role of the women who refuse to even accept that whole black spot thing of moving them out. They, they would, the, you know, the steam rollers and the bulldog, uh, those who become tear down their township, uh, their spot, and they would fade into the night, and then the white folks would have their black folks on the machines feeling that they wiped that, and then the women would come back with their tar paper and their sticks and their stones and set the community back up again. This was a fantastic struggle of a women's right to have place and space for her family, and this dog South African system. That's the drama that needs to be told. That's when he was in that drama. And people need to appreciate her, not for what might have happened in terms of her trying to protect herself and somebody might have gotten killed, but she civilized the women resistance. And the children, Steve Biko said, hey, we, we the greatest, what did he say, the greatest weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the not mind of the oppressed. People. And he was willing to give his life for that. Waking up these children. That's the great dramas that can be done. You, you're in the right direction, but make sure you put the meat and stuff there together. I appreciate Nelson. Didn't appreciate him before, because I went too deep without, I got a paralysis of analysis. My person was Biko, inspired by our struggle, inspired by Malcolm X. But when Nelson realized, because he was a part of the culture, that these uh, white folks, English and Africana, were prepared to have a race war in South Africa. That would not have been a race war between the various African groups in South Africa against the whites. It would have been a race war between the African groups against each other. And so he took the stand that he took based upon his understanding of that. I never did appreciate it. I still don't appreciate it fully today. He didn't want reparations. Don't get things, don't upset the car. Return, he, and, and he, return of the land. That's right, the return of the land. A lot of things he did to represent struggle and the strength of the African yeah, tradition, yeah. but a lot of things he didn't do. And reparations has to be on the table for African people everywhere, forever. Thank you so much. All right.